Hello everyone and welcome to Destination Penguins. We are Jarek and Agnieszka traveling to the bottom of South America in our van Mundo. In 2023, we left our American lives behind and embarked on the journey south. Life is short, world is beautiful, and we want to make memories for a lifetime. So join us on this journey as we publish the highlights on YouTube. The next adventure in Mexico is to visit Cenotes. So yesterday we arrived at one of the cenotes that it's privately uh, operated um, and stayed the night. We're going to stay a couple nights and go to cenotes during the day today. The family here um, owns two of them and one I believe is in a cave which I'm not really fond of and the second one is open to the air. So, what are cenotes? Cenotes are like natural sinkholes that expose groundwater. And because the area is pretty much all limestone, then the water is very clear and blue. And it's kind of um, a little colder, so it's a, it's a great place to refresh from the heat of the day. And the cenotes are found in Yucatan, and most of them are between some, somewhere between Merida and Tulum. They, some of them were actually sacred waters and sinkholes and swimming pools kind of thing for ancient Mayas. So they've been around for a long, long time. And this particular one, as I mentioned, is privately operated. So it's a it's a lovely place. It's still a work in progress. Um, they building a swimming pool. I assume they're going to build some cabanas as well. But the grounds are gorgeous, and I kind of always have a soft heart for people who start their business with the garden. The garden is beautifully maintained. There are beautiful plants. There are beautiful pathways and places for people to kind of sit and enjoy the garden under the palapa like right now. Um, and um, yeah, the, the weather is gorgeous as well. It was kind of chilly at night, but during the day it's nice and warm and it's not very humid. Um, so it's like an ideal place to spend a few days. On top of it, <laughs> we're here alone. So there's no other overlanders. The family doesn't live here on site. So pretty much yesterday, the cenotes closed at 5 o'clock. There, there was probably last person here about 4.30. And after that, we were here by ourselves. And technically, they open at 8 o'clock, but it's 8.30 and there is nobody around again. So... And also, we like in the middle of nowhere, so there is no city traffic. There's nobody, just birds and and insects are making noises. So it's been a really, really fun to be around, and we're very much looking forward to swimming in cenote. Machi Chan, cenote. Okay, we're going to get on this, I don't know, Colectivo, and they're going to take us to Cenotes. Oh. Nope. is going to take us to Cenotes in this
a roundabout. Because we need to turn around and go. Okay, we inside the cenote. And it's just a small opening in the sky. There's a whole bunch of roots coming down from a whole bunch of pl plants. And then there's stalactites or stalagmites, I'm not sure which. And then there's the cave. And then there's the super clear water. And it's just the two of us. Okay, so this is how it looks from the bottom. And then we have this little opening here. That's pretty cool. I wonder why there is this hole in here. So, this is where the sun is shining from the outside. Alright, so this is the entrance to the other cenote, which is a cave. Okay, so the second cenote is in a cave, which is not my favorite. It's kind of a long way down and then it's right here but look at the water I mean it is amazing it is very beautiful in here I must say it's gorgeous Is this the royal way? We left the Sonata and we off to a new adventure and this adventure is a super special one. We are going to see one of the seven wonders of the world. Um, we are two hours away from Chichen Itza, which is a very special Mayan ruins on the Yucatan Peninsula. So we're driving there and probably going to spend a few hours um, at the site and then move on to the next destination. I want to see what Okay, we're at Chichen Itza. It's kind of hectic, but considering it's one of the seven wonders of the world, it's understandable. According to the historians, Chechen Itza was one of the largest Mayan cities with the most diverse population. They based the fact on, on many architectural styles found in Chechen Itza. It is located on the Yucatan Peninsula in the vicinity of four cenotes that provided plenty of water for the city. Chechen Itza rose to its dominance around year 600, started to decline in the 13th century, and finally was conquered by the Spanish around the 1530s. In its heyday, the city was full of color 
with many buildings painted in red, blue, green, and purple. The three most famous structures are the Temple of Kukulkan, also known as, as El Castillo, the Temple of the Warriors, and the Great Ball Court, where the Maya played a Mesoamerican ball game. The ball court is very impressive seeing it in person. We also love the skull platform. The design of every skull is different. For the first time, we saw 1,000 columns in front of the Temple of the Warriors. During our visit, the site was busy with many tourists and crowded with vendors. It is understandable that there is a great interest in visiting Chechen Itza. It is considered one of the seven wonders of the world, and it is a UNESCO heritage site. Right, this is our second attempt in getting to a campsite on Bacalar. Oh, there is ah. a pisotte. Huh. Um, because the first one we went, it was pretty packed. We couldn't see how we can find a spot to, to park in there. So we are in the second attempt. But this is like 10 minutes on this kind of road to get to the shore and the campsite. And we hope that it's going to be a nice one. <sighs> but the road is pretty bad. However, after being on Baja California, nothing is really surprising. We took us three times to find the right position back and forth, back and forth. But I think Mundo is now level. We also considered using the boards to level, to level the truck, 
but end up not using it. So Yarek is putting them back on, on the roof. But Munda looks pretty good. And Bacalar is just at the end of this tiny little road. So, yeah, we're going to see it later. But the campsite is pretty empty. There's only three people, us and a French family, and I guess a Mexican family. Okay, so we found another magical place. This time it's Bacalar. And what I read is 26 cenotes combined in one big Sort of a lake, lagoon, I don't know how you call it, but it's fresh water and it's very, very blue. And the thing you do here is take kayaks and you go kayaking, or you just sit and enjoy the water and you can swim in it. But it's gorgeous in here. First of all, these ducks are adorable. Look at these ducks. Look at you. Wow, this is very pretty here. Wow, look at how clear the water is. Oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, so we found this paradise here, again, <laughs> in Mexico. And uh, look how clear the water is. It is beautiful blue water all around. And we're going to go swimming. Like spend a whole few days, whole day during the day, and then maybe a few days here. So, there is a little bit like a sulfur. Yeah, well. I know. It is a little sulfur. Like this. Hmm. Maximum four person, you cannot come up with. What? It's four people. Maximum four personas. Wow. There is another deck over there. Renting a kayak to go on Bacalar. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Ooh, sorry. Kayaking. Boy, it's totally empty. Nobody else inside.
The water is so blue. Cuando siento que la inmensidad oscura se cruza por mi camino y el dolor no tiene cura. Pienso en tu mano y me alivia el calor de tu enseñanza. In this episode, we left flamingos in Celestun and drove to Cenotes past Merida. We stayed there for a few days and then we drove to Chechen Itza to visit the Mayan ruins. Then we drove south to Bacalar, where we also spent a few days kayaking and swimming in the lagoon. <laughs> 